Billy. Yeah. I miss you, man. Missed you too, bro. Yeah, you was out there. You was way out there. I was. Let me tell you how far out there you was. You was out there very far, and I couldn't get to you. I was way out there. Mm. That's what that is, way. Real quick before we get you way out there. <clears throat> Ernest. Yo. Simo. Yeah. Man, y'all ready to do this thing live? Yeah, man. Oh, shit. Yeah, we are doing live, huh? Yeah. We're going to do this thing live. And everybody going to see the whole connection. The, the whole, whole crew. Connection. And they going to know. That we can't do shit without y'all boys. We definitely can't do shit without We y'all. can't. Every time I call on the show, I feel like I owe y'all something. Mm -hmm. Not nothing money. No money. Mm -mm. Ain't no money. No, no, no money. They got all the money. They got the Man, let me tell you something. Guys at home, shit has changed around here. Niggas got shit. Let me, let me just tell you something. I, well, listen. Ernest came in and made, a, made an announcement. We had, before the show, there was an announcement. That's why the son of a bitch had an attitude all day. Oh, we, now this shit is all I had enough. You know, niggas hey. shit. Hey, hey, man, I think that's the first announcement that Did You Miss Me has ever had. Mm -hmm. He walked in and he was like, hey, guys, um, you know, shit changing. And, um, oh, I'm making money now. I'm making money. See, when a nigga says oh, that. Oh, I'm making money now. Let me tell you something. When a nigga says that. He's still making money now. He got an idea to do whatever he wants. Whatever he said, you do, you're you making 30000 more than what you had. Yeah, if you say that. Let me tell you something. He ain't, listen. He, <laughs> to say that you're making 30000 more than what you was making. I can tell you, I know niggas get money. When you come in the house and it's, it's boxes of shit that's being delivered. That's when it. Niggas, when niggas too busy getting money that they can't even go to the mall, they got to ship the shit. Got to ship that shit. I said, yeah, them boxes. Send my shit. What he, what he got today. Hey, this is when I knew it was real. When this wasn't even on topic, this wasn't, we was somewhere else. We was, we, we know we making money. You know, we get that. We get the money making. Then he said, oh, we moving out. Oh, make no, oh, yeah, we get up out, oh, we getting up out of here. Up out of this bitch. We got, hey, nigga, we, we got January, so we ain't tripping. But we getting up out of here. Niggas going, hey, see a nigga do some shit like this right here? That mean, look, I'm not touching it. Somebody, I got money. Somebody get this shit. Some, somebody come get it. I got money. You, this when you get money, you gesture. You say, hey, come get this. When you got money, hey. Shit, come, come right here. That's yeah. how you talk to the valet when you, uh, you want that little punk ass $5. Nigga, come get come it. over there. Nigga, run. Well, I think them boys get that money. Hey, man, congratulations, uh, Ernest and Simo, on that money. All right, Simo ain't do shit. Oh, damn. Oh, it ain't Simo. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't Simo. Oh, that's solo money. Oh, okay. Okay, he, 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 he getting that Bobby Brown on my own money, okay? He gonna Bobby Brown this year. Ernest did It's so hard for me to say, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving the group. I'm leaving the group. <laughs> Today is my last day. Today is my last day. Hey, it's a heartbeat. It's a heartbeat. <laughs> but you can check me out on my new album, Flash. <laughs> Flash. It's, it's lonely, lonely at the top. top. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hey, let me tell you how that nigga was holding that goddamn that award. Today's my last day being a heartbeat. Mm. <laughs> That nigga was holding that goddamn. Movie. That crowd went, oh, oh, yeah, ooh, going solo. Check out my new album. No, he he, he went up on that. I'm going solo. Check out my new album, Flash. <laughs> it's lonely at the top. He got up on that because yeah, that's his shit. He finally getting away from these niggas. Took the award and said, "Thanks." <laughs> hey man, I gotta pour this out, man. We not gonna have a five heartbeat ending to "Did You Miss Me?" Nah, we not. Ain't gonna be one nigga singing in the right church. I know right now I'm the Eddie Kane of the goddamn show. I, oh, you damn sure Eddie. I, I'm damn sure. Hey, Eddie do you Kane. know how these niggas was blowing my phone up when you was overseas, when you was in Dubai? What I do? First of all, I clicked on. I don't know what the fuck going on. I click on. I see Courtney with her titties out. I say, whoa, hold on, wait a minute, back up. And I hear her whispering. I said, oh shit, what the fuck is going on? On live. God damn, what the fuck? My phone starts ringing. Back to back. What they saying? It's buzzing. Hey, man. Billy wife tripping. <laughs> she over there tripping, man. She violating over there, man. She over there wilding, man. Go get her, man. Go get her. I'm like, what, what, what do y'all want me to do? do? Do you think they need to see what happened? Like, we got a clip of it. But you know how it happens with clips. Yeah. And here's I, my I, wife's titties out. Man, look. If they was out, they out. Somebody, exactly. somebody, somebody took a picture of them. They screenshot it. Somebody, screenshot. somebody screenshot them titties. Yeah. Could have been a man, could have been a woman, but them titties were screenshot. Yeah. Hey man, they out there. It is what it is, Billo. Yeah, man, that shit was crazy. 
but people definitely was hitting us up. Then you came on, and uh, you know we gotta start had, had to, to uh, had to clear that up. Uh, a new a new sect of uh, podcast I'm gonna introduce to some people today. I feel it's time that they meet them. Okay. And before we do that, I, I think I think I'm gonna go ahead and do this. So I'm okay. Gonna, I'm gonna need you to do this. All right. We got one of the finest today. It's uh, Don Julio to keep. Hey, do, do we still have that that gin? Yeah. All right, we'll get it tomorrow. Where it is. So look. Uh, you see, Billy responded back. You know what he responded back? What he say? Hey man, are you available January fourth through the fifth? <laughs> you know what I text back? Refer to text about did you miss me? Billy, we waiting on you, brother. People didn't already called you. All right, all right, okay. This one, uh, it's to a, a good friend of ours. Okay. First of all, to earn his, uh, getting up out of here. Earn is getting the fuck up out of here. <laughs> this is the Ernest, Ernest getting up out of here. Hey, hey. Hey, guys at home, raise your shit up. This is the Ernest. Ernest. He, he getting up out of here, y'all. He getting up out of here. Ernest hey, look. Not even be here. Don't be surprised if you see the nigga in the vest in Arlington. Niggas that wear vests just got money. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Is yes. this everywhere you go? I know how this nigga gonna be. You know, he dressed like Amigo when shit start popping. Oh, yeah. 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 I seen the nigga. Yeah. You, you got, I knew he got a check that night. I, when we went to the hills. Oh, man. I knew he got a check that, that night. Shirt, that nigga, yeah, that shirt. That shirt. That was a party motherfucking shirt. Let me tell you something. Use life of the party that got Hey, on. that's a goddamn shirt that you want on your body when you party. I won't, listen, if you still got that, bring that to Arlington. That's because that's, cause that's damn sure. It, we, that's going to be that. Uh, this is for comedian Kool Aid. Passed away out of Detroit this week. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that boy. Every time I used to go to Detroit, he'd uh, host that thing, and uh, did a couple of my first big college shows. Old Kool Aid. So the Kool Aid. Kool Aid. Keep him laughing, bro. Hey man. I'm excited because I'm about to announce this uh, new sect of the podcast that we're gonna start. Uh, go ahead and run that. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. See, I want that shot to sit in. I ain't got no chaser with that. It's Kool Aid, and the urn is getting that money. See, he's been dropping some dick off too. I need, to, yeah. Oh, he's been dropping off dick. Yeah, he's been dropping off dick. See, you know, Ernest. Me? Yeah, <laughs> he he's dropping Relax. dick off on these hoes. That's not going on. See, if he's here. Yeah, I hear that. Yeah, he's here. You trying to downplay That's what niggas say he when they drop yeah, dick off. Yeah, you say that. He's right. Saying, Man, yeah, crazy. crazy. Yeah. Nigga crazy. Nah, that's always. not happening at all. He's refuting the shit. He's mm -hmm. trying to play be low key. He dropping that dick off. Come on now. Ernest making moves out here. Now, I used to think I was a star of the show. I didn't give a fuck. Every social media platform. You know what they're saying? What? Ernest! Simon! Simo. I told you. I told you. Every platform. I told you. Post a picture of myself. I'm on the beach. Second comment. Ernest! Simo! You. Eight goddamn replies and likes. You just let them know. But, uh, the new group that, uh, we gotta start speaking to. You spoke to them that night. Mm hmm. And I'm proud to announce, uh, Did You Miss Me podcast. It's officially become the newest chapter home of, uh, Junior Deacons. Junior Deacons is out here uh, putting a lot of work in, in the community. And uh, this is especially for the men that are in committed relationships because black men don't cheat. No way. And the Junior Deacons are good, wholesome, honest men. Absolutely. Working hard for the single women and widows and orphans of uh, society. What else, what else we're here for? That's what they're here for, especially single mothers. Come on now. We we're all for about you. the single mothers. So the Junior Deacons is definitely in support of the single mothers. Yeah. And uh, we want to help the single mothers however we can. Yes. Uh, we making sure that the single mothers is uh, cared for, accommodated. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Because uh, somebody got to accommodate them. Yeah. We got prayer panties that we sitting out. Goddamn right we got the panties on deck. For single mothers. That's right. These panties have been prayed over. You know, a lot of people say they got a prayer cloth. Right. Nothing's really touching you close where you need it at. You need it in prayer that area. in that area. Right, because it secures you. It's, it does. Prayer in that area secures you. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people have holy water. Yeah. But you, you just rinse them prayer panties off. You yeah, just got to ranch them. And you ranch them and then you come put right them back on. You don't have to even let them hang. Just and, put them right back and on. now that uh, our good friends over at Rated Intimate. Yeah. They are also donating to the cause. Adam. The junior deacons. Shout out Adam. The junior deacons are also trying to help uh, these single mothers keep uh, their vows of uh, 
not letting that ass get out all the way back out there in the streets again. So he's got some intimate uh, items to help ease the devil's temptation out of these women when they sit at home, vibrators, dildos, and things, you know, because the devil is the devil is a dick. Because a, a woman can hit with some devil dick, she done. He's got her. So we want to make sure that the dream dickers keep uplifting these women. We're on board for that. Yeah. We're definitely on board for that. Yeah, you know. It's and, needed. And remember, if anybody asks you, whenever you out or missing from time with your spouse, mm -hmm. we out doing the Lord's work, getting ready for the prayer breakfast. That's right. Because that's what the junior deacons is about. It's all about the prayer breakfast. We're trying to get ready for the prayer breakfast because sometimes we have to stay out late uh, and do the hard job of buttering buns. and uh, Somebody got to do it. Somebody got to do it. That's what we here for. Especially the men that are in relationships that have to do this extra work. Cause, and know, I feel for them. Because, you know, niggas, you know, we we don't get enough credit for doing work, no, especially don't. God's work no, in the don't. community. So all my junior deacons out there. Uh, Keep doing what you're doing, man. Yeah. We yeah, need y'all. God is real good. Yeah. So shouts out to those junior deacons who are putting in extra overtime. Man, you know, I was way the fuck away from home. Yeah, you were. Started yeah. out, the whole conversation was, my agent, she hit me. She was like, um, you got your passport? I was like, yeah. She's like, I'm going to call you back. All right, cool. She called me back, and, like, next hour. Hey, um... Are you booked next week? I was like, what day? She tells me today. I'm like, no, nah, I'm, I'm not booked. Are you booked the day before that? No, nah, I'm not booked the day before that. Are you booked the day before that? No, nah, I'm not booked that day. Why won't she what just ask you if you booked this week? She asked me if I was booked this week. It's a lot of shit. But then she wanted to do that. And then I'm just trying to figure out what the hell she was asking me all this for. She finally comes out and tells me that uh, one of the fans out here is a sheik. And okay. The sheik wants to have me fly over to personally request Billow. The sheik. Now, uh, the sheik, we cannot disclose you can't. his name. The boy had to sign an NDA. Because uh, I can't you know, speak on the name of which specific sheik. Right. But it's three sheiks. Mm -hmm. It's three brothers. Uh, these brothers are responsible for putting out uh, distributed oil. That's the number two supplier for Exxon and Mobile. Okay. To give you an idea of what type of paper they work. Yeah. These brothers, these three brothers, one lives in Brussels, one's uh, in Saudi Arabia, and one is in Dubai. Okay. So they spend a lot of time running these oil mounds. You know, they got the oil fields in Saudi Arabia where the oil is actually spewing from the ground, and they're mining the oil. Then they have oil distribution points. Brussels, mm. and then Dubai now, another major oil distribu distribution place. You got all this information out them boys. Yeah. <laughs> he gave it away. He told us exactly what was going on. He could. So, uh, boy, could. They tell me that these brothers are going to get together. It's all getting explained to me. Uh, the call that my agent got, Jenny, mm -hmm. Jenny Kim, mm -hmm. the Jenny Kim on Instagram if you want to check them things out. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, oh, shit. That boy. Hey, hey, hey that boy. That boy just like, tried to T-Mac Jenny, man. Throw <laughs> Jenny off the glass. Somebody got to get some over there, too, Jenny. <laughs> Jenny's uh, Asian <clears throat> and uh, full of persuasion. Yeah. But she knows how to run a motherfucking comedy agency. So uh, Jenny's getting this information from the sheiks. Mm -hmm. uh, his in, the ambassador who speaks on behalf of the three brothers, the three sheets. The ambassador tells Jenny, go Ruse, go important. Are oh, you ready to rate this role? Well, we already right in that. For everybody thing. at home, go ahead and post something up right now. We in that thing now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Ernest got money. Ernest got money. You know, because so I can drink this whole bottle up. Hashtag and not worry about shit. Don't do that. Ernest got money. My nigga, Ernest That's got not money. True, man. <laughs> Ernest got <laughs> money. <laughs> Hey, listen, it's hey, it's man. Right. It comes with fame, Ernest. It, it comes right. with fame, hey, man. Listen, if it ever was a time to pass on the yeah, keys not, <laughs> and, and responsibility of that shoe night, hey. I'm definitely trying to get to be Tupac. You hey. can have the shoe night shit. <laughs> that's, that's, new, that's baby shoe. Ernest don't want all that come with fame. He just want a piece of it. Yeah, man. Ernest. He know it come, he come with it. The people know his name, so they're going to be like, hey, man, he got the money. Man, I seen two new pair of square toes in Ernest's closet. See, there it is. He got square, some new square toes. Brand new. Brand new. He turning some corners. Hey, man. 
So the ambassador's telling Jenny about the Sheiks and what, what's got to happen. We can't talk about the Sheiks' name specifically. Right, because you got an NDA. Right. Um, and it's not because he feels morally wrong, but it's because uh, for his safety. Right. You know, people could use this information. Against him. Them. Right. So uh, what she says next is what blew me. She mm. says, Billy, okay, I was worried, but I wasn't worried at all. The Sheik and his brothers, they're flying in each 80 concubines. Eight and eight, that's 16. 16 and eight, what's that, Didi? Not right now. Not right Not now. Not right now. That's 32. Because because I'm 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 actually. That's 22. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, give me the number again. Let me let me bounce. 16 and eight. It's 34. It's definitely not 34. That's 24. 24. What are y'all pickles doing right now? Hey, bro, let me tell you something. Give me that number one more time. It's uh, <laughs> 16 and 8. Definitely 24. It's definitely. So that's 24. My bad. My, I had to go back in dealer mode. I'm back. Okay, use that. Yeah, we, we just hit. That's what it was. Yeah, it was. That was damn sure went over with 24. I, so, I'm clean over the goddamn blackjack limit with 24. But go ahead. That's 240 concubines. The brothers get together three times a year. They don't have a lot of time. All in one place. All in one place. The father's the old sheep. He died and left the whole kingdom to them. So the three brothers. He left his kingdom to, to his three brothers. Whew. The three sheiks. Uh, these sheiks got money that I had never seen before. Yeah, they got money. Because uh, to get the offer, wasn't an offer. The offer was. Normally what happens is they call your agency to say, hey, we want Billy Cereals, we want delay, uh, we want to send uh, a deposit, you know, we want to pay him seven to $10,000 to show up. So let's send a deposit. First, we want to offer you, mm. which is- That's hey, the normal thing. I want to offer you this. Right. This is the total amount of money. So y'all know at home what happens. So when y'all know people say, hey, we want to book them boys, they got to send an offer. We're offering this. Hey, I got, I got 4,000, I got 2,000. I got 1500 I got 3000 whatever. That's the offer. Now that might include your travel. That might include travel and ground. That might include travel, ground, and lodging. Mm -hmm. That might include travel, ground, lodging, extra accommodations for security, merchandise, personnel. All right. Depending on what the situation is. We somebody is what he's trying to tell you. Yeah, it's definitely somebody. You ain't gonna get us for so, a little uh, bit of nothing. Yeah. This offer wasn't an offer. It was a telegram of a wire transfer. They paid in full. She offered $15,000. We ain't offer. asking shit. Here go the money. Come get it. It's a telegram. We've already sent the wire to you. Come here. Come there here. go your money. You bring somebody with you. We covering that. We got all that. We're going to fly you first class. Okay? You goddamn right you fly me that far. You're going to fly me first class. See, now, first, I didn't know how far away it was. Mm. I know it's across some water. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, you know, I fly from L.A. to Florida all the time. It's five. I fly to New York. That's six mm -hmm. hours. You know what I'm saying? When they told me I needed two days, I don't need two days to get ready for the Shit. show. Get, no, you need two days to get there, motherfucker. So we started out on a flight out of here to Dubai. And then from Dubai, we took another. Now, that first flight was 16 hours. Then we had a layover in Dubai. Then you took your second flight. How long was the layover? Layover was four hours. Then the next flight was five hours. Then the next flight was two hours. So we flew from Dubai to Seychelles. Dubai is lavish, the airport lavish. They got a Versace store in the airport. They got all type of shit in there. It's it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? They got all type of shit in the Dubai airport. The location they're sending us to is a remote island off Seychelles. So they flew us to Seychelles. First of all, I know exactly what the hell you're talking about. I'm going to let you keep going. I know exactly where the fuck you're talking about. Dubai, they had a goddamn Lamborghini in the airport. Yeah, got a Lamborghini in the airport. In the goddamn airport. Yeah. I know the island, and I know what you're talking about <clears throat> because I didn't sign no non-disclosure agreement. Yeah. Billy did. 
Go ahead, you can tell them all about it. Yeah, I was there. I've been there. So, uh, you know, I'm like, damn, that's a lot of flying to do. Told me you know, I was going to be flying for 23 hours before I even got over there to even do anything. So, of course, I tell the wife, baby, we out of here. The money's clean and green, and it's already sent. We just got to go over here and have a good time. So we get all our shit together, bag up, drop the kids off in Houston. We fly out. We get over to Dubai. We turn it up in the goddamn airport. Goddamn right you turn it up. Fucking club. It's a whole little mini city inside the airport. And they're having a good goddamn time. First off, we fly Emirates. Emirates, uh, this is my first time flying Emirates. Mm. Uh, I want to say this, and I want to make sure everybody understands. After you fly Emirates, the first thing you say is, fuck you, American Airlines. Fuck, fuck you, you, Southwest. <laughs> fuck, fuck you, you. United. Y'all won't be seeing me no more on the international flights. Yep. You know why? Because fucking Emirates, they got unlimited drinks. Yep. Unlimited liquor. Yeah. Beautiful flight attendants. Beautiful. Gorgeous women. Mm-hmm. You got a whole little partition right here. You lay, put your feet up. You got a big ass... 20 inch monitor right in front mm. of the back of your seat. Shine. Watching whatever you want to watch. Movies that's in the movies. Shit was great. I watched Black Klansman, Equalizer 2, Denzel whooping everybody ass in the movie. I'm stretched out. Baby right there next to me. And they're feeding the fuck out of you. They're feeding you every hour and a half or two. You're getting a meal. And I ain't talking about peanuts and pretzels and that shit in the box that they give you American Airlines. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about full hot mini dinners. Curry goat, rotisserie chicken, sauteed lamb, shit, baby grilled chicken, rice pilaf, sauteed asparagus, Brussels sprouts. Shit's awesome. All you can drink. They got a, an airplane. They got a second floor with a bar. We can just go hang out in there. So, you know. On the plane. On the plane. <clears throat> the plane flying like a motherfucker. Let the bar. And I say. You know, this is turning the fuck up. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, man, court, I'm going to go up to the bar. Because we got our seats. We stretch back. I said, I'm going to go up here to the bar. I go up to the bar. And right, right by my neck. Mm. I'm like, God damn. Bro, you want to scoot the fuck back? It's a little Indian man. He got his goddamn shoulder. His, his chin on my fucking shoulder. Mm -hmm. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Come. He trying to motion the bartender. Right. I mean to tell you, this nigga chin is on my shoulder. Nigga, shit about your space. I say, hey, bro, you got to bag up. You got to bag up, man. You can't. That don't, that don't feel weird it's, to you? Yeah. That's what I'm talking to him. That don't feel weird to you? Now, this gesture that he did, I've been called a nigga, and I've been looked at crazy by white folks. But you ain't fully been shitted on to a Middle Eastern person. Shit's on your blackness. Mm. He said, ah, saw, sheesh. I said, what? Yeah, I saw, saw, sheesh. Didn't say shit, but that gesture was like, hey, get your broke ass the fuck out of my way. Mm -hmm. Talking about being close and shit. I'm rich, nigga. That's how, I, that's, that's what I got. That's how I felt when he said that. Right. So he did that little motion. <clears throat> and then I was like, man, I don't know. While I'm saying that, he says, T -t 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 -t. and then starts talking. The little Emirates bartender lady, she looked at me and answered, and then she just turned right to him. So he shitted on me. I'm hot. Yeah. Shit clean on you, Billy. And I'm mad. So I walk away from the bar. I'm coming down the stairs. I go to the seat. seat. I don't see Courtney. I don't know where she is. Because so I got to tell her what the fuck happened. All right. Now my stomach hurt. I got to shit. I go in there. I take a quick shit. I'm in there. The motherfucker pulling on the door. I said, hey, somebody in here. Outside the door. You know what I hear? Yeah. Talk, talk, sheesh. Goddamn. The same motherfucker that followed me from the goddamn bar. I know it's him because he's doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Normally when you do that, you, <laughs> ah, you, you know, black men, we do that and get on. Mm. He stands there. He just doing this shit. Propped up. Back straight as fuck. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> All outside the door. I see him because he in his seat. His seat is right there by the bathroom. He, <laughs> just right there. And then he's steady pulling on the door. I say, hey, man, somebody in here. He, I sit. He just sitting there. So I cracked the door. I say, hey, bro, I'm in here. I'm using the bathroom. I'm going to need you to stop pulling on the door. You know what he did to me? What? Dirty bitch. Just, you know, and I don't, I don't, 
I don't know what the fuck it mean, but it's it's changing every time. Right. Yeah. Get your broke ass from out of here. Yeah. So I go back in and I finish the bathroom. <coughs> I try to open the door to come out. Goddamn door won't open. And I'm like, okay, I know I got to do the lock off. I mean, unlock it and lock it again. Maybe it's jammed. I'm pushing the door. Now the door's bending a little bit because it's, it's kind of like plastic. The door's bending, but it won't open. You know why I won't open? Why? This goddamn Indian man got his goddamn open, open V. Anytime a nigga leave the button, unbutton down here, and all you see is gold necklaces and money. He got money. He got money. That goddamn stomach is out to here. And he got his stomach up against the door. That's how close to the door he's standing instead of bagging the fuck up out the door so I can get out. So all I can see is this the crack of his little face in the middle of the damn door because he's sitting right there. So I, I do like this. It's hitting him. He ain't moving. I say, hey, man, you got to get off the door so I can get out. That's it. I say, hey, man, get off the door. So I push the door hard as muffin. The little man ends up falling back and his arm rest of his chair is right here. So he, boom, his feet pop up. He tries to come lean forward. And at that moment, I felt somebody grab my hand. It's Courtney. She looked dead at me and said, did you miss me? God damn. We took you around the world for real, for real. Nigga, we was around the world for real, for real. And we dropped your so ass off, man. His, I was going to whoop his ass on the plane. But I felt like I was going to die when I did it. Not yeah. on like they was going to shoot me and it was going to be some like random nigga pull up and be like, oh, ho-ass nigga, pop, 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 pop. Right. I felt like they were literally going to tell him, we are going to kill this man and kill me on the spot for beating up this Middle Eastern man. So I just went back to my seat. I sat down. We landed. We got to the resort. Everything is beautiful. This trip is going great. They showed me where I'm performing at. Now, the whole purpose for the three brothers getting together with their 80 concubines a piece is. A piece. 80 a piece. That's two Each nigga got 80. 80. <coughs> they get them all together in this huge palace resort. And they have one big two to three day orgy. Mm. The women and the three sheiks. And I want you, that's when it hit me. Because 80 people don't sound like a lot. Let me stop you. This is why I'm excited about this story. Because <clears throat> when I went, I didn't get a chance to know any of this. What's I was on? just being a renegade. Mm, I see what you're saying. But go ahead. So, uh, you might as well shoot that. Yeah, you know what? That's uh, you want to go ahead? This Again, is... can I can I start it? Yeah. He got money. He definitely <laughs> got money. The man got money. The man said, "Oh, we get about here." We... He rolled that right there. We get about here. Tell oh, you, the man got his own money. <laughs> He a prince. He a prince, baby. Oh man, he a prince has oh, his own oh, money. <laughs> he a prince. Oh, Lisa, you done hit the big time this time, baby girl. Hey, bro. And this fucking title better be Ernest got money. Ernest got money. This show the fuck better be Ernest got money. Now you know you what clever you know what picking title ass niggas. This Ernest niggas be and some... the three sheeps got money. <laughs> <laughs> That's the title. Ernest, Ernest and the three sheeps got, got money. money. We know. Already branded it. That's it. That's it. That's what the fuck this is. That's when it. When they ask about this one, they're gonna talk about episodes like Black Dead, yeah. Grape Seraph, yeah. Kirby Sales itself. <laughs> and then they gonna say Ernest and the three, three sheets got, got money. money. That's, That's it. Niggas got money. That's it. The niggas got money. From now on, anytime we talk about some nigga balling, you know why? Because Ernest and the three sheets got, got money. money. God damn it right, they got money. Yeah. Tell us. We proud of you. I ain't gonna ask for shit. So you gotta say that. Cause, because that's right, nigga be like, okay, now what do you want? Oh, dad, I just want pictures, Ernest. I just, I just want to get a headshot. Okay, I thought you wanted $30. No, I just, just want some pictures. Hey, man. That shit is funny when you see your, your partner glow up. I mean, hey, bro, he made an announcement. He did. You know and why? nigga say, well, we're getting up out of here. Getting the Let's just be clear here. about everything. You know you know I don't give a fuck what you heard. We're getting up out of here. You know why they're getting up out of there, D-Lay? Why? Because Ernest. 
and, and the three sheiks got, got money. money. You got that right. They got money. They got money on this one. And it was the whole resort. Now a resort ain't a big place when you first think about it. Boy, keep talking. Describe it for him, please. Show him how that motherfucker look. Uh, if if Ernest decides he wants to put it in the, the show, mm -hmm. you can see footage of me on the beach. Go, okay, good. We can, we can take that. We can roll with that. However, gotcha. It may not happen. Take that on your Instagram. How we gonna get that? Ooh, oh. God, it's a blow. <laughs> that one. That was a low one. Oh. That was. Hey, you gotta get him up. I mean, you gotta get him up, right? Hey, hey. That's a low one. You gotta get it up. That's way below the. Hey. Why I don't have an Instagram at the end of this show. Right. So, you know, it could happen, but it probably won't. Okay. Because Ernest, Ernest and, and the three sheiks got, got money. money. They damn sure got money. So, uh, this this resort, it's it's beautiful. It's on the coastline, <laughs> and the serene part about being on the beach at this resort is. When you walk out on the beach, there's no one there. It's just you and a coastline for about a mile and a half on each direction of empty coastline and empty beach. Between the hours of 8 a.m., really from sunrise, and about 6.30 over there, which is also 10 hours ahead of us. So shouts out to my people that's in Seychelles, that's watching, and Dubai. They are 10 hours to 11 hours ahead of us, depending on where you are in America. Mm -hmm. If you in L.A., they're 13 hours ahead of you. So nigga, it's a whole different situation over there. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this beach because it's my birthday. I'm out there on the beach dolo. Sun comes up, I'm standing out there. Uh, but it ain't even my birthday in America. It's still the day before my birthday in America. So I'm enjoying my birthday in solitude, but then I also get to enjoy my birthday when America celebrates my birthday. So I'm just really taking all of this in because those are take it in moments. Now, the whole resort is when you go out the country like that and you travel way over there. These resorts, there's not even a signature process for signing for shit. Mm -hmm. You're not even telling them what room you're in. Like, put this on room such and such. The guest list is so tight that they know what room you're in. They don't ask you. They serve you and then you just, it's an endless stream of service. You just keep, can you bring me a strawberry shake? Okay. And then somebody comes back with a strawberry shake. They don't say sign this and put your room number on, you know, which you just keep bringing your shit. And so I did what any man would do on that type of situation. They said, you don't have to pay for it. Because, you know, the number one sign that you ain't paying for shit when you get to a hotel as a traveling comedian is that when you check in and they just give you the key, they don't right. ask for a credit no card. credit card to hold or nothing. It's time to turn <clears> up. <throat> it's time to spend whatever resources is made available to me. And you know why we spending what's made available to me? Why? Because Ernest... And the, the three, three sheiks got, got money. money. You got them right. They got they money. They got money. They got money. The they boy got come money from money. On top of money. They come from they money. They ain't worrying about what your room service is. They ain't worrying about what you drink out your little bar. Because they don't give a fuck. Because they got money. So I am ordering the fuck up out of shit. And I'm just blown away because, like I told you at the beginning of this rent, 80 people don't seem like a lot of people. Mm -mm. First sheik comes out. You know why he comes out? And I know he comes out? Because in the middle of my serene walk on the beach, I look up and there's a helicopter flying in. I don't know where the fuck this helicopter came from. There ain't even an island close by, but this motherfucking helicopter clear as day flying directly at me. It just started appearing out of nowhere. That's how far out and in the empty coastline that we are that you don't see shit. Just Africa is, is close by. That's the closest country. It's actually going the closest continent. Ethiopia is the closest major country. So I'm standing there, I see all this helicopter come over. Helicopter lands right on the beach. And when we come back, I'll tell you what happened. When Goddamn right, we're going to tell you. What's up, everybody? I'm D-Lay. And I'm Billy Sorrells. This is the number one storytelling podcast in the world, people. We're here for you guys, and we're doing mm -hmm. something special. Patreon.com is a site that you guys need to check out. We're doing special things, exclusive things for you guys, mm -hmm. like uh, early access to some of the episodes. Yeah, man, most definitely. Bonus content that you wouldn't find anywhere else. Yes, discounted uh, 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 merchandise. Oh, yeah, we're giving away a lot of shit. People, you got to, but this is for, for some of our serious followers, our people that are really down with the Did You Miss Me podcast. We're doing these things for you guys. And if you're not familiar with Patreon, go in and we'll give you guys all the luxuries that Did You Miss Me Podcast And you know, what, you know how we know if they real fans? How do we know? They know this number right here. 323-385-9734. We'll get somebody over there to you. Hey, man, we back with it, man. We back with it. Billy, you was taking us out in Seychelles. On the island. On the island. As the sheik flies over in his helicopter. Mm -hmm. So it's this dope-ass helicopter flies in off out of nowhere. 
it lands literally like 22 feet behind me. Is so, it more liquor? Oh, you know what? You, we got more liquor. You know what? It's over. It's over, Billy. Nah. Nah. You know what? You saw that it was nothing in there, but you still thought that something <laughs> would come out. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm we trying. in that thing. So it's a hella part right behind me on the beach, tucked away in the sand. I don't even notice it. Helicopter lands. Three guys get out. Another three guys get out on the other side. They walk to the front of the helicopter. This ain't a regular helicopter. It's a chopper. It's almost like a baby Blackhawk. It's not just a me and the pilot and whoever else wants to die in this little bitty ass helicopter that be flying around. No, no, no. This, this is like a, almost like a Blackhawk transport plane. Fits like 12 to 14 people on it. So they're hopping off this helicopter. The Sheik comes out behind his guards. So it's three and three. Next to the Sheik, he's got his ambassador, just the person that talked to Jenny. And then he's got his uh, private harem which is another four women who got suits on. And then it's some concubines. Wow. And concubines would be wow. uh, anybody that's on Instagram singing into the camera as a female in the mm. club doing this right here, that's a concubine. That, that's the type of concubine. They had some, some just turned up women like they was at the club all the time. Yeah. So the sheik walking with his shit on, the security's there. The harem was there, the four women in the suits. Then you just got the concubines. Now they flew these women in from all over the place. South Africa, Australia, even Egypt. I didn't know Egypt had hoes like that, but they got hoes. So he comes off, boom, he walks. That's sheep number one. Sheep number two, I walked up on, didn't know he was a sheep. Sheep number one, kind of dresses like, hey nigga, I'm a sheep. Sheep number two, dresses like he sells car stereos at your local mall or electronic store. He got that type of Middle Eastern slash Migo vibe. Right. And you can see they swag. I'm going back to the pool to go get court. <coughs> she was sitting poolside. We're going to go have breakfast. Pool popping like a motherfucker. He got music out there. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. Why is there a DJ at the pool? You know why? Because it's sheet she number two. She she number two. It. Yeah, she get it. He over there chilling, and uh, he got a little short set on, like cut off, like cool little uh, cuts off at his sleeve. It's like right. a, you know, uh, a shirt with no collar, but it it's, it's, it cuts off right here. He got some shorts on, all black, got gold, heavy gold chains, but his gold look a little different than the gold that we see. His gold look gold gold, like, hey, this gold bitch, like, right. it's like, screaming, it's screaming gold. Right. His little diamonds that he got all around the rim of it just hit. And then you just start looking around and you start noticing that there's no guys there. Just a bunch of women by the pool. My wife is sitting over there in the jacuzzi area and it's 72 random bad bitches by themselves. The sheik is in one corner, the sheik number two, turned up at the pool. It's like, nigga, imagine just going to the pool and at your local hotel and it's like the club in that motherfucker. Mm -hmm. So they having fun. My wife laughing, having a good time. She got a little baby suit on. She's like, get him fun out here. I'm like, hey, I know she got women, but uh, two or three of these little bitches about to get tossed up. Yeah. We can go on and recruit. Run that. And so she running that whole game trying three. to turn them up. Three, two, three. three. Yeah. yeah, I got you. She trying to run a three, two, three. That's what that's called. She trying to set up a three, two, three. As so I'm like, hey, go and set your three, two, three up. We go eat breakfast. I see sheik number three. Now, sheik number three, he's the oldest of the three sheiks uh, <coughs> in the most serious. So the ambassador comes to me and he says, hey, uh, Sheik would like to talk to you. Uh, okay, which one? Uh, you haven't met him yet, but you'll meet him. After you and your wife enjoy your, your breakfast, we need you to meet us for lunch. So we go get dressed, come back out, and we come right back to where we saw the ambassador. The ambassador is now by the beach, but now by the beach where it was just coastline with nothing, there's like 30 tables with candles lit on the beach. There's water coming up because the tide has already come in for the evening, but it's candles and flowers on the beach with tables. People are waiting tables at the beach, stepping through water coming up. Well, one thing you got to know about the coast, it's not just going to come to one spot and stop. It's going to keep getting higher. So this water started off not hitting our tables area at all to the point where the water is, the tide is coming in and it's hitting your feet. So people are coming around taking our shoes off because, you know, I'm thinking we're going to dinner to the sheep. I take my shoes off. They take them off 
and you just take them and put them somewhere. I ain't telling my name, I ain't telling shit. He just took me and my wife's shoes. So we sitting there on his table, sturdy tables, candle lit, water coming in. And so the sheik comes over. He leans his hand on my table and he starts talking. He says, I saw him on my side, so I saw him on my side. And so I'm kind of like, all right. I turn to my wife, I said, what are you saying, baby? Because I don't know what he's saying. She said, I don't know what he's saying either. I said to the person that was next to him, I said, hey, can you get somebody to translate? Because I don't know what he's saying. And she turns around and says, no, I wasn't talking to you. <coughs> I want you to know that this weekend is very special for us. This weekend is where we spread our seed of fertility amongst these 240 women that have come here on this beach. Come on now. I want you to know that we brought you here and want to show you a great time. I want to extend our gratitude to you and your wife for making the journey over here. And we want you to thoroughly entertain the women that have come out and our special guests for the weekend. Sometimes you'll hear women, sometimes you hear special guests, but just know that it's 240 women. And that's a lot of women. I counted three dicks, bruh. He can't even account for at least 20 to 40 of them. Women. You can't, you're going to miss them. You're going to miss them. It's going to be some good ones in there, too. It's going to be a lot of Some good. sleepers. Yeah. And you're going to miss them because there's 240 women. It's three dicks. That's a lot. A 323. Three ain't no way you're doing that. But You ain't got enough dick for that. I, and, I'm, and I question it because like, I'm thinking 240, 240 women Come with on, at least bro. hoping to get penetrated. Come on. In a foreign country, in the baddest, most beautiful place you ever wanted to see. And it's three dicks. It's a shortage on the market, bruh. And I think it's four dicks on that island. And I want to put it out there. So me and baby, we out there kind of fishing around. We ain't, we ain't just, just being disrespectful. But he ain't going to miss 40 of these women. They ain't going to miss Come 40 now. of these women. You deserve them. So for the, la the next three days, you deserve them, Billy. nothing but sex happening. Come on now. Whole resort fucking. Oh, they make it out. I'm talking about shit you ain't doing at the at the daytime pool table. You you ain't out there just full tongue kissing. They out there making out. Billy, let me tell you something, Billy. I've been to that resort before. So you know what I'm talking about. Let me tell you something, Billy. Let See, me give you. I'm glad you took you know what? I'm glad you took tell them what you said. Let see. me tell you something, bro. I've been to that resort. And I didn't sign no NDA. I did. I've been to that resort twice. Wow. One time I did. But this time I didn't. Yeah. I really have been twice. Billy is not bullshitting. They fly me in on a helicopter. I remember because I me I got in a day earlier. I was going through my divorce. That's why I remember this so vividly. I was going through my divorce. Nigga, that's why I love this fucking show. He was, I wasn't even gonna tell that story. When you brought this in my fucking head, nigga. I was going, I was hurting, nigga. And nigga, let me tell you something. D-Lay had lost so much weight. Oh, bro, this brought back so many memories. I was going through it. That's when I was fucking, I was sleeping in my car overnight because I was hurt. I had a fucking Hennessy bottle that Big E still be saying, nigga, I want my fucking Hennessy bottle because I was going through it. I was just drinking. I was standing in the comedy clubs all night, killing on stage. Ain't that something? You going through your biggest shit. You destroying on stage. I'm going to my car. I'm sleeping. At this point, I was sleeping at a, I was staying at a, um, like a house with like five or six, seven, eight niggas. I just left. I was like, we about to go through a divorce, so I'm going through it. I get this motherfucking gig. I'm like, all right, cool. They was like, you can bring one person with you. I was like, shit, I'm gonna bring Jay Reed, my partner with me. I couldn't bring no female at the time. I don't trust no motherfucking body. My heart got ripped out my fuck. I'm going through it. But you on his island, man. Fuck it, I'm gonna take Jay Reed with me. Let me tell you why I won't take Jay Reed. That's my best friend, and on top of that, you gonna watch over me. I'm probably gonna have some cry moments in this bitch. You don't wanna cry about It's a nice moment. I don't, I don't wanna do that. But more importantly, I'm going to this island for a threesome. That's what I said to my, I'm going to this island for a threesome. You know, that's good. If I leave there with less than that, just one on one fucks don't even count. They don't count. I don't care if I got one every day. I was out there three days. I don't want that. I want that threesome. Tell them about the coastline and where they see it. First of all, nigga, I went kayaking. See, you know what? I went kayaking. You know why I didn't go kayaking? Why? Didn't go kayaking. Because the kayak man wasn't there. Yeah, the nigga got to be there. He got to be there. He wasn't there. Why? Because it's 240 women walking around. He trying to fuck some of them. So y'all went kayaking. 
Yeah. I wanted to go kayaking. I saw the kayak. Before I went kayaking, I went into the little gift shop. You know the gift, gift shop. And I said, I need to give me some trunks. I didn't have any trunks at the time. You know what happened while I was there? What? When I went to the gift shop, it was closed. Why? Because 240 women on the island. God damn. They from all over the world. Somebody want to fuck them? Paris, Milan. Somebody from Brussels. Shut this thing down. Saudi Arabia. Ethiopia. London. They everywhere. Italy. I already told you it was Milan, which is yeah. in Italy, but it's, it's generally. Italy. I get you. Just the other outside. You know, you got Venice, you got the Vatican area. Rome. Well, it was open when I went there. Yeah. And I need to get some shorts, some swim trunks. I went in there and I found me a nice little pair of swim trunks and I grabbed them. Basic, nothing you know, too crazy. And I'm thinking like, hey, listen, <clears throat> if I was in the States and I went to Walmart, I'd probably pay 20, 30 bucks for these shorts. This is the type of caliber shorts it is, but I know I'm out of the States, so it could be a little bit more. So the woman said, those shorts are 127,000 rupees. You know what? And the thing about that is, when you hear 127,000 I immediately think, thought 127,000 US dollars. Here's what you think. I lost it. You lost it. I lost it. I said, what the fuck does these shorts do for all that money? She said, sir, the rupee is not what the dollar is. She explained it to me. I was like, cool. Fuck it. I'll take them. I end up paying 300 US dollars for some shorts. You know why? Why? Because the rupee conversion fucks you. No. Can I I went even better. What? The sheik took care of it. Yep, he covered those fucking shorts. Three hundred dollars on some shorts. Somebody did. I charged him to the room. <laughs> you know what? Anybody, Somebody covered. I, I didn't. Can I do something? Can I do something? Yeah. I want to shake your hand because yeah, me and my wife. I was on it. We ran through that room because they didn't. They didn't put my card down, and I knew it. Yeah. And see, see, and see, when you see, and it, I said, well, you're gonna take care of it after. You're gonna say, hey, listen. At the end of it, I'm like, if if you say I owe you, then we no, can no, do it. No. I'll square it away. You I'll pay you. You can't ask me for shit because you know why? You didn't make me put my card down. So that's that means it's all inclusive. inclusive. That's all inclusive. Right. So there's a little hut on the other side of the resort. They do massages in there. Mm. My wife says, well, I'm going to go to the spa to get waxed up. Maybe you should go get a massage. I said, you going to spend all that money? I said, wait a minute. I didn't put no credit card down. Go ahead and go over there. Charge that shit to the room. She got her nails done. Toes done. Full body massage for an hour and a half. Then got a whole wax job done. She had all that. Then gonna help tell me and call me in the room. You should get up, go downstairs and eat breakfast, and then come over to the spa and get a mani pedi, and then get a massage. And I'm kind of like, nah, I don't do all that. That's you. Let's just go to the beach and go get in the water. She was like, no, you need to treat yourself. So I go over there and I get this mani pedi done. Mm. They got my toes spread out, but they ain't got the little cotton balls in between. It. They going through them, touching my feet up. I was gonna be barefoot today, but I didn't want to shit on. Them. But my feet ain't ain't fucked up. But I'm a. I ain't you been around Eric Benet too long. Yeah, but I want to let them know that that, that, feet that, out. that that I had three three women from a nationality that I don't know rub my feet this weekend. That's a good thing. The, the woman put her feet on my face on her face and it was it was putting her thumbs all in the bottom part of my arch of my foot and all on my heel up the back of my leg. That was sexual. Yeah, that's cool. I, I was I was wanting something sexual to happen because I felt like. Yeah, Anytime one put your foot on her cheek, she had it right here. Her, my she clearly wants your foot. dick in her pussy. Big toe was right by her nose. I'm just sitting there with my toe out like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause she rubbing my feet good. It's good. Manny Petty, massage. Now the massage they made me put on some some see through drawers. The drawers look like pantyhose. She said, please take off your clothes and put on this robe. And so she didn't turn around when she said it. She's holding the robe and she's got a little bag to put my clothes in. So I'm like, all right. And she was like, and she do this, like, take it off, nigga. So I take my shirt off, I put it in the bag. Now I'm thinking, she gonna turn around so I can take my pants off. She's staring right at me. Nah. She got these see-through drawers in front of her. She ain't moving. I said, fuck it, I guess you wanna see some dick. So I dropped that boy. And that, that boy kinda stood up like, what's happening? Right. And then I'm looking at her, she looking at me, but ain't nothing really happening. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of feeling like, all right, cool. You want to fuck this woman? I mean, my dick is out. Gotcha. And she ain't, she's not flinching. She ain't flinching at all. So I go ahead, I take all this shit off. I put the little see-through drawers on. I'm feeling weird because I got see-through drawers, but I ain't tripping because I'm in a faraway land, far away from everything. Yeah. 
Nobody knows where I am. It's my birthday. It ain't even my birthday in America. And you know why I'm over there? Because <clears throat> Ernest uh -huh. and, and the three sheiks got money. They That's why got fuck that. I'm over there. They got that. So <clears throat> I get my massage. She tells me to turn over. I got my turn over uh, on my back. She's rubbing the inside of my thighs. Now, my dick is harder than <laughs> goddamn mistletoe berries. Because and mistletoe berries is hard. You can't even bust a mistletoe berry. When you see mistletoe, mistletoe or holly and you see them little red berries, try pop them on my motherfuckers if you want to. You think it's some goddamn shellac or some rubber cement on the motherfucker. Yeah. You can't pop a mistletoe berry. Them goddamn mistletoe berries hard as hell, boy. That's harder than a goddamn Chinese BB. You All know right. what I'm saying? It's harder than Chinese arithmetic. It's hard. You know what I'm saying? It's real hard. You know what I'm saying? It's harder than garage flow. Mm -hmm. It's hard as hell. Because the it's garage hard. flow hard it's hard to get it. Yeah. It's hard on a garage flow. So I'm 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 hard, but because I got them see through drawers on my my boy, he's sitting there right he he's sitting there right here. He's like, yeah, what's happening? Right. What, what we doing? So she rubbing all down the inside of my thigh. When her knuckles is under my meat. And so I know that I'm just I went on embracing myself. Anytime a nigga do this right here, I, I don't even want to give you no eye contact for the feel for you possibly about to do. So I'm gonna just look, mm -hmm. I'm gonna look right here. You got it. So I'm I'm waiting on it. She rubs a hand around my meat and then puts the right worst. back on the thigh. That's I the said, worst, right? There. God That's damn. The worst. It's extra dick that came out now. Cause I I can't believe that you rubbed your hand and missed it. Push the drawers yeah. out, didn't touch none of the dick, and put right, put your hand right at the crevice. It's ball on top of your knuckles, but you on the thigh. You all in here rubbing. I'm hard, hard. I said, Dad, damn it. She said, what's wrong? You too hard? I said, yeah, he hard. He real hard. He hard, hard, hard. Because you done rubbed all around it, boy, some see-through draws. I'm feeling like I want to fuck this lady, Didi. How does this lady? I don't know. About? I think she's about 24 okay. to 26. She got a little pudge on the side, but she got a little nurse stuff on. Titties up in her chest. Face. Face is nice. Face nice. Yeah, she looks... Uh, ass? Oh, no, everybody got ass. Everybody got ass. All 240 people. Everybody got ass. Okay. It's a lot of ass. That's good. My wife got ass. Okay. Everybody over there got ass. So it's just like, damn, there's a lot of ass over here. And we still ain't seen all three of the sheets together. But I know while I'm in there that they fucking... All over the place. Clearly. People is making out, girls making out. It's, it's wild. It's a wild climate. So I finish up my massage. I go back to the room, put my clothes on. We're going to get ready and go over and do the show. Me and my wife get over to the show. The showroom, all these women is there. Dolled up. The sheik is there. The sheik number two is there. The sheik number three is there. The three sheiks is there. They guard is there. And all these beautiful women is here from all over the world. So I start my show off. And I'm like, yeah, you know. Let's give it up for all the single ladies out here. Everybody's <laughs> clapping. The whole fucking room is clapping because everybody's a single lady. Goddamn right, everybody's a single lady. And I said, ladies, how you feeling? Like, y'all smell good. You look good. They laughing. They're laughing hysterically. Mm -hmm. You know why they're laughing hysterically? Why? Because they don't understand what the fuck I'm saying. Goddamn right. they don't speak English. They just know the nigga comedian is up there, so laugh. And I recognize they laughing. And I said, hey, you like what I just said? <laughs> I said, you don't know what the fuck I'm saying. And it's okay. And I said it on the mic too. You know why? Because they don't know what the fuck I'm saying. Mm -hmm. The bartender know what I'm saying. Give me 30 shots. He pours 30 shots. I start bringing people up one at a time. They dancing. Now there's another comedian that's there for the weekend, Seton Smith, and he's watching me from the side. I put the mic right to my mouth. I said, Seton, I ain't trying to be brilliant tonight. The money's already paid. <laughs> the money's already paid. Seton does this. I ain't nigga, you smart. I said, yes. You know why? Because my job is real clear. These 240 women want to get some dick from one of the three sheiks. Yeah. They don't give a fuck what I'm saying. And they don't speak English as their first language. Doesn't matter. Guess what that, it ain't their second language either. Johannesburg is over there. Yeah. Swahili is higher on the pole, but English. So they don't understand what the fuck I'm saying. They're just laughing and having a good time. Why well, make the bad vibe, the vibe bad? Then my time, I got the fuck off. Seaton goes up, does his shit. We leave there. Me and my wife are just sitting here on the beach. These 240 women is all over the resort. I slowly sit seeing that. Them sheiks dropping off a lot of dick. Yeah. You know why you never see them? Because they fucking. That's a lot of fucking. All they do. That's all they do. And as I spent the next two days on the resort, celebrating my birthday for the second day, because it's my birthday in America mm -hmm. on December 1st, it sat in that uh, we getting this money. 
And you know why we're getting this money? Why? Because Ernest. And the, the three, three sheets. sheets. Got, got money. money. You got them right, they got money. How'd you get out of there? Let me you tell you there? something. I charged that $300 shorts to the room. Yeah, I wasn't got the tank top. Wasn't gonna pay that at all. Why would I pay that? Why would D-Lay pay $300 for some shorts? And they didn't take his credit card up front. Dancer should take his credit card up front. That's, we're not even gonna do that. You're not gonna do that. So yeah. my whole plan is, me and Jay Reed about to go kayaking because we have to show later on. Right. Because my whole mission out there is to have a threesome. Yeah. I gotta have it. You should. I want nothing less than a threesome. Especially with some Arab women. I'm hurt. You, you I'm battered. I'm broken. Is there any grief coke out there? Oh. Glad you asked. Yeah. I didn't ask for the coke. Okay. But I did ask for the weed. I asked the gentleman for the weed. <clears throat> gentleman was a bailman. He uh -huh. recognized me. Yeah. Happy to see me. Cool, brother. First thing I established, I need to get weed. And let me tell you something right there while he's saying it. Everybody's black. Mm -hmm. out here. Yeah, everybody everybody's black. black. Yeah, everybody's black. Here. Everybody's black. Yes. They serving you, everybody. The driver, everybody yes. in this in this world is black. Goddamn right they're black. Keep going. So I said, I need to get some weed. He says to me, the best. That, do it again. What the fuck I gotta say? The best. Yeah. I ain't asking shit else. That's a good one. You don't have to ask nobody nothing else when you they tell you the best. Hey, if you get Hey, how's it going? The best. Woman giving you some head in the car. The best. That's good. I ain't tripping. My man said I'm gonna bring it to your room a little later on. I like cool. I ain't tripping. I'm about to go kayaking with Jay Reed. I got these $300 shorts. Let's go have a good goddamn time, my nigga. I'm hurt. I'm battered. And I want a threesome. Right. I'm in the kayaking thing. We in that bitch. Just fucking clowning, nigga. We going too deep in that bitch. But for kayak is turning over. We just made my nigga having a good time. Show that night. Get back to the room. Shower up. We go to the bar. We taking all these free ass shots. Yeah. Free big shots, too. We drinking the Cavassier. I'm drinking that bitch underhand. Ooh, I'm that, having a good time, bro. We get to the spot, and we're doing one show, and we out that bitch. The room set about a hundred people. It was a beautiful setting, beautiful setting. They had chandeliers. Uh, the stage was nice. They said, "Hey, listen, we know you like to, you know, work the crowd. One rule: don't say nothing to the sheik. They don't want you to say shit to the sheik. Don't say nothing, nothing to, to the, the sheik. sheik. In my case, three sheiks. Don't say nothing. None. That was one of the only one. Rules. He's sitting in the back." Don't say shit to him. Not a problem. Cool. Finish up there. Do my thing. Just like Billy said. It was this room was like a hundred, helped set a hundred people, all women, and some of the most beautiful women you ever seen in your goddamn life. Some of them understand English, most of them don't. I finished my set, Jay Reed finished his set. We in the back. I said, man, get a towel, get some drink. I said, man, I'm about to go back out. He said, the guy who booked it said, Hey, you about to do what? I said, I'm about to go back out. He said, No, no, you can't go back out. You guys are done for the night. You're done, done. I said, what you mean? No, no, you, you can't party with the sheik. That's his, that's his guest. He doesn't want, you well, know, you I got... told you, what guests mean? Women. I said, oh shit. They was like, hey, we got your food already. We know what you're eating. You know, deuces, nigga, we out. Right. We get you up out of here. Yeah. I'm like, oh fuck. I get back to the hotel, knock on the door. It's the bellman. Yeah. Nigga hand me a bag, brown paper bag. I said, my nigga, I appreciate you. He J. Reed up, J. Reed, come through, nigga. We about to roll up. Ain't no action. She got all that pussy. She got all the pussy. Yeah. All the pieces. It's all locked up. See, that's different than just nigga having dope dope boy money. Like, I'm in the corner nah. with some bottles and shit. And all that. No. He getting some of the pussy. No. But the she... He's gathering all of it. You know why he's giving all of it? Why? Because he flew him over there. Yeah. He put him up. Yeah. They had one job when they took the job. They knew what it was. And that was good. And I'm going to get back to the flying in too. So the guy brings over the weed. I think this motherfucker. I'm like, bro, I appreciate you. Right. He was, I was like, how much owe you? He said 150. I said, nigga, for. For what? I said, an eighth. 
See, at that point, I can't dispute because he's looking like that's what the, that's the prices. I can't fucking dispute it. What you gonna do? Go down the street and say somebody give me some weed from another. I can't place. fucking dispute it. Right. So you know what I told him? Nigga, putting it on the room. I gotta put this shit on the room. You, I can't pay for the shit. I'm putting this shit on the room. You know I'm part of the hotel. You know I'm like part of the style. VIP guests. You tr tell me what it is, and I put. I charge one hundred twenty five dollars, and you can get it out of that. I ain't. It is what it is. You putting everything on the room. Fuck it. J. Reed comes over, I open the weed. It's the worst weed I ever seen. The shit is black and brown. You know what? That's that. It was the worst weed I ever fucking the seen. The weed bro. that's bad like that is always the weed they hype up too much. Nah, man. This that alien versus predator right here, man. This that, hey, man. This that Sigourney Weaver right here. We still smoked it. We had nothing else, Billy. Yeah. We still smoked it. Smoked it. Said the boy talking shit, nigga. Just enjoying the view because it's a dope ass view. Getting lit. Next morning, we got one more day there. We wake up for breakfast. We're sitting having breakfast. Me and Jay Reed, two chicks walk up. I was like, hey, you guys were at the show last night. We really enjoyed you guys. I'm like, oh, shit. shit. Finally, some people. There we go. We from action. the goddamn show. You know, know what I mean? Up. Cool. So. Because doing the show is pulling your dick out. You pretty much. It's and there you everywhere. You dick when you do the show. They're everywhere. Yeah. Billy, I said, man. Finally, I got a chance. I want to talk to one. I'm gonna get. A, I gotta to talk to one of these. Let me see what the fuck is going on. What? What are we a part of? Right. All right. Cool. So I'm sitting there talking to him for a minute. J. Reed bounce. Hey man, I'm out. Cool. We sitting there talking. A lot. Uh, our breakfast goes into brunch. We having mimosas, sitting laughing, talking, having a good time. Hey man, where y'all from? I'm asking questions. I'm like, how did y'all get here? Uh -oh. It was like, well, we're all friends of his, and we all get paid. I have a boyfriend, and he just understands. Chick told me straight up, I got a boyfriend, and he just has to understand. I'm going to get this money. I'll come back to him when I need to see him. She says, I fly just about every country that he goes to. I'm the new one. I'm like, God. And when I tell you bad, then I'm... And if you need somebody to get over yes. to where you are in your country, mm -hmm. to give it to you every time. Goddamn right. Every day, all day. Mm -hmm. With no equivocations. Because we're taking care of shit that That's you right. ain't got to worry about. Give us a call. 323-385-9734. We'll get somebody over there to you. So I'm sitting there talking to the chick. Both of them, we're vibing. I'm like, both of y'all, yeah, we both knew. Cool, we really enjoyed you guys. We were wondering if we could talk to you guys, but they told us last minute that you're not to fraternize with them. So, you know, but we're off now. So I'm like, okay, cool. We having drinks. We go to the pool. More fucking drinks. We together all goddamn night. Oh, man. Now you already know in my mind what's about to happen. This is the goddamn threesome I've been waiting on. Yep, <clears throat> is it? We in there? We going to the evening? Fuck it. We so lit. We in bathing suits all night. Yeah. My shorts cost three hundred dollars. When you caught, when you commit to the goddamn road, bad road. As in I got on three hundred dollars shorts. That's six hundred dollars worth of shit. Hey man, I'm lit. I'm lit, lit. Like how we lit. Now I'm speaking my mind. Yeah. Y'all ain't never had black dick. I don't know where that came from. Shot that bitch clean out there. Y'all ain't never had black dick. When, they, when, you, when you throw that out there like that, they, somebody got It is what I'm lit. I'm hurt. Yeah. I'm about to get a divorce. But you lit. I'm lit. No, we haven't. I know. Let's go. Walk to the room. We in there. I was hesitant about telling this story, but then I realized I was hurt. I was going through something. Mm -hmm. I was fucking in pain, Billy. When you in pain like that, it's like, oh, it's the worst feeling because you can't see nothing past that cloud. Billy, listen to me. Fuck it, we get back to the spot. Both of them beautiful. One is Latin, one is like she's South African. Ooh, I know exactly. So it's a dark and a light. Yeah. I got the best of both worlds. Yeah. We in there, Billy, and I'm playing zero games. I go in there, and it's a curtain that you can open up in the room. It's a canopy type bed. Right. You can open the window up. I open all, bang, oh, they, it's wide open. I turn around, both of them naked. I said, showtime. They playing zero games. Ooh. Zero games. What the what? We get straight to the money. I'm not playing no games. I'm hurt. I'm throwing dick. It's hurt dick. You ever threw hurt dick? Yeah, some hurt dick out there. That's probably the best dick a woman can get from you. Yeah, because you ain't you ain't even trying to stay. Listen to me. 
Her dick is the best dick down that a woman could ever receive from Sometimes a man. Sometimes niggas don't even come doing her dick. Her dick? Oh, pff, nigga. Pff. Her dick would change a whole woman's life, her whole perspective. I just, yeah. I'm throwing at her dick. Yeah. And I'm throwing it. And these are, they're loud. Because they just told you they never had black dick before. Right. They loud. I'm yeah. giving it to them. Yeah. I had a knock on the door. Security. I looked at the door. I know a security. Ladies, y'all just be good. You know why it is? Because when we see security, we, we got a plan for them. Hey, bro. I go in there. I open that door wide. It's a man and a woman. I'm just standing there. Yeah. Boy, out there. How can I help y'all? Um, we're getting some complaints. Could you could you close the door? I said, yeah, I'm throwing a whole lot of dick in there. A whole lot of dick. People would be complaining. What you need? Could, could I'm big dick in the resort. You big dick in all of it. I am big dick in this resort. Yeah, yeah. I said, yeah, I'm throwing a lot of dick. The woman dropped the head. I said, you can raise that up. It is what it is. Right. Yeah, it's covered up. That's protection on that. What y'all need? Hey, man, I know you guys are enjoying yourself. We have a good time if you can keep it down. I said, that's on them to keep it down. Because you got to let them know you dropping it off. Hey, I'm, I'm throwing dick in there. Hey, ask about me. I mean, I'm talking shit. I already got my money. Right. I'm off one more day. I never yeah. been to this island. Right. I'm balling out of goddamn you control. Ball all the way out. I'm balling out, playboy. Close the door. I said, let me lay back and get service like a god. Nigga lay back. They just pampering me, man. Just rubbing me down. Making you feel real. Nigga making me feel good. I said, that's what the fuck I need. Wake up in the morning, man. Everything was cool. They grabbed their things. They leave. I said, this is dope as fuck. I'm walking out. Before I'm, I pack all my shit, I called the bellman up first, right? First, we've been calling for a couple hours. Because you got to take a three. You got to be at the airport. It's the international flight. You got to be in that bitch like three and a half hours. Three and a half hours. And you got to go out security every time you change between the gates. But that's a whole other story. I'm just trying to get out this motherfucker. I'm right. trying to get out of here, right? I bought one bag, one carry-on. Right. I ain't even trying to bring no big... We ain't trying I'm to check the luggage. Right? So, I'm grabbing my shit. On my way out, I run into the bellman. Yeah. The same nigga that got me that bad ass weed. Same nigga that gave you that bullshit, don't he? He said, man, how did you like it? Mm. I said, it was terrible. That was definitely terrible. It's the worst weed that I've ever had in my life. Wow. He said, man, I apologize. I said, nah, bro. It deserves more than an apology. Ain't no apology. He said, I know. We don't have what y'all have over in the States. Forgive me. I did the best I can do. You had to. But I seen them women lose your room this morning. But I know you had a good time. Oh, man. And he looked me dead in my eye and he said, Did you miss me? God damn it. Took them around the world and dropped their ass off. Hey, man, this is another episode of Did You Miss Me? I'm D-Lay. And I'm Billy Sorrells. Thank you all for watching, man. Keep on.